Welcome to Unity with Pam, with your host, Pam Willis Hovey. Hello, and welcome back to a special edition of Unity. We are here on location with Judge Lynn Toller. You see her so much from divorce court. I'm telling you, my husband even said to tell her hello. My best friend in New York, Cordelia, she said, I love her. She keeps it real, and you know what? She's going to keep it real on Big Girl Show. I just want to go ahead and say, Judge, welcome to Unity. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me. Well, we're going to get a chance to hear a little bit about your background. People see you on TV, but we're going to know about Judge in a personable way. Okay. Tell my viewers a little bit about your background. Uh, I was born in Columbus, Ohio, and I have one sister. My father was an attorney. My mother was a stay-at-home mom. Uh, they were tremendous parents, not because they made me happy, but because, <laughs> but because they made me prepared. And uh, I uh, went to Harvard, and then I graduated from unit. Graduated from Harvard undergrad, went to University of Pennsylvania Law School. Uh, my father was disappointed with that. He wanted both of his daughters to be doctors. I couldn't do the math, so I had to switch majors. <laughs> uh, I uh, went to Cleveland, joined a law firm, found a man, got married. I married a guy with four children. That also made my parents angry. And uh, then um, uh, I, was, I had a 10-month-old baby, four stepsons in the house, uh, wow. a hard job. And uh, I was tired, and the woman who was the judge in my district that was six blocks from my house retired, and I said, I want her job, and mm. I got it at age 33. Tell people, what was it like, a wife, a mother, and a judge? I, it, it was better than being a wife, a mother, and a lawyer. Okay. Because when you're a lawyer, you have to do a lot of billable hours, and you're working 60 hours a week. The beautiful thing about being a wife, a mother, and a judge is judges set their own schedule. Mm -hmm. And so I always set my dockets early because I think better in the morning. And I, I make determinations on how things go. I can wait, work eight hours early and then get off early. So at 3 o'clock, I was with my children. So it gave me the flexibility to be a more involved mother while still having a full-time career. One thing I want to ask you, too, you also authored three books. I did. Tell them about one book I want them to hear about is My Mother's Rules, A Practical Guide to Becoming an Emotional Genius. Tell them a little bit about that memoir. I, I wrote that book because I did, uh, dis determined that whenever I was on the bench and some defendant hung his head and said, yeah, I get your point, I see what you're talking about, it's because I had the ability to remember and rephrase something my mother told me and relate it to him. People usually don't get involved in criminal acts. And I was a municipal judge, so it was small time, you know, not small time, but it wasn't murders and rapes. It was domestic violence and carrying a concealed weapon, disorderly conduct, that kind of thing, or negligent homicide. And I found that regular people got caught doing irregular things, not because of what they did or did not know. It was because how they felt, the anger, the, the, the inability to deal with insecurity or fear. And you cannot correct someone's behavior unless you can get to the cause of it. And the cause True. of it was often emotional. And my mother's ability to separate the emotional from the action uh, is what allowed me to get to people, get to people's understanding and, and their reasoning. And that's what allowed me to be a good judge. And then I thought, well, since it helped me do so many things, I thought I'd put it in a book, her way of thinking and try to help other people have rules about how to manage their emotional life. You know, I was getting a little bit of synopsis about your book, and, and I asked you, is this book a personal testimony for Judge Lynn? Is it? And, 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 no, and I told you, no one else has said that for me before, but it is a personal testimony, I think. I was a very, my father was psychotic. He was, he was bipolar, and uh, mm. I was a very nervous kid to put it mildly. So you had to be on eggshells? All the time. Okay. All the time. I mean, and I mean, dinner was burnt, all the windows went out of the house. So, mm -hmm. and I was not a very stable kid myself. And my mother was allowed, was able to wrangle him and to take me from a woman who, a little girl who was hiding in the closet because she said it was not safe to get out to a woman who was on the bench. Uh, you, me in the closet and me on the bench that's brilliance, and that's my mother's brilliance. And I, and I share the weakest and the worst part of me, and I share how I learned to be the better me that I am today, and hoping that will help other people take whatever's wrong with them and build it into something better. 
So what was the turning point for you in your life to come from something so dramatic as that to be the person that we all come to know and love on TV? What was the turning point for Judge Lynn? The thing is, there was no turning point. Okay. My mother was a constant editorial. Every day, she used to, when I would, I had my first nervous breakdown when I was nine. And her thing was, I'm going to get you through today. We're going to put this emotion over here. We're going to deal with this over here. And I have had her constant tutelage from men forward. I talked to her already twice this morning. She still speaks to me about how I feel and what I need to do. So it was a journey and a partnership that was, uh, it was just one step at a time. Mm, so she put a lot of wisdom and strength oh, in you. A lot of wisdom and strength. And most people don't understand their own emotions. My mother was able to do that. She was able to separate how she felt from what she needed to do. She taught me to do the same thing and thus enabled me to become the woman I am today. Well, we're going to commercial break, then we're coming back more with Judge Lynn Tola from Divorce Court. Unity with Pam is being brought to you by these great sponsors. Come into Chester's Barbecue for our world-famous mouth-watering ribs. Smoke fresh on our grill daily. Or try one of our barbecue pork plates with fresh sides. Chester's has delicious sandwich combos to choose from that are sure to please. We also serve tempting home-cooked favorites. And don't forget to take home your own bottle of great sauce. Chester's Barbecue, serving the best food at the best price. With three locations to serve you. You love your parents, and it's hard to see them struggle to keep their independence. Magnolia Manor can give your parents the assistance they need to enjoy life. You won't have to worry if they are eating well or taking their medications properly. And they'll be in a safe, secure environment with no need to worry about cleaning house or doing yard work. Visit magnoliamanor.com to learn more. Magnolia Manor, just down the road. A community of convenience, caring, and fun. My name is Japal. Two years ago, I received a kidney transplant. When I was 21 years old, I started dialysis. And for seven and a half years, I was a patient receiving treatments three times a week for four hours each session. And man, it was hard. After receiving my kidney transplant, I was able to find and marry the love of my life. My kidney transplant gave me my life back. You have the power to donate life. Be an organ, eye, and tissue donor. To find out how, go today to DonateLifeGeorgia.org. Local Church Connection is an exciting new publication in the Columbus area. Local Church Connection is a magazine that offers free advertising to Christian churches. Our circulation is 10,000, and we're free to pick up at over 100 locations in Columbus, Harris County, and Phoenix City. Be on the lookout for our new March-April edition of Local Church Connection. For business or church advertising, contact Tricia Jeans at 706-244-6413. And check out our website at localchurchconnection.com. Welcome you to be a part of our ministry. This is not a put on, but this is a come on. And we come to share in our different ministries with our dance team, with our choir, and our TV ministry. And we're looking for great things to happen, great miracles to happen within this great thing to happen, great miracles to happen within this place. Come and be a part of the blessing plan. Hello, welcome back to a special edition of Unity. I hope that you've been enjoying Judge Lantola. We are really getting a chance to know about her behind the scenes. Big Girl is getting real educated about her. I'm telling you, I want to go ahead and say, welcome Judge Lynn again. Thank you again. Well, let me tell you, you've got another deep book, which is what brings you really into Columbus. It's talking about marriage and the Black Marriage Day. Your book says, Making Marriage Work, New Rules for an Old Institution. What made you write that about marriage? I, there were several reasons. One, my marriage wasn't going well. I learned something from divorce court from watching other marriages take the same trajectory. And I thought, wow, if I can learn something that helped me manage my marriage a little better, maybe I've learned enough to help other people as well. And I also saw on divorce court, especially in, our, in the black community, that marriage is, uh, it, is, is difficult. It is, it is falling out of favor. And I think that uh, we need to give it a, a, a helping hand because 
marriage is just not about the two people involved in that particular union. Marriage is about the entire community because that's what holds us up. And I think that we should uh, make a stab at making marriage uh, a stronger and more viable institution in our community. You know, one thing I've heard some statistics say that in the African American community, that divorce rate is on the high rise. Yes. Why is that? Uh, I think that stress kills marriages and, 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 and failure to marry the right person, and we do a lot of that. Uh, and in the black community, every stress that, that the majority community has is times two. So economic, educational, health-wise, all of these difficulties are exacerbated in our community. So our, 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 our stresses are more and our divorce rate is higher. And also I think that the community that surrounds you has to support that marriage. And I think that because mm -hmm. marriage has mm -hmm. become so uh, intermittent, not the norm for us, that that pulls away at it, that structure, because you don't have 10 married couples on the block. It's you're married and everybody else is running around. So, you, so it doesn't have the support that it needs. And part of what I love about the Black Marriage Day is there are black married people out there. We're going to find each other. We're going to hold each other's hands. And we are going to support each other and the institution itself. As you see things, especially being a divorce court judge, and I know you've seen some cases, but what has been some cases that just made you go, oh? <laughs> There's one, uh, the bride slept with the best man as opposed to the groom on the wedding night. Ooh. Did they get married? They, marriage lasted 90 days, surprisingly enough, before they came to see me. But what happened was, and you have to watch your substances, alcohol was involved. He got to playing cards and drinking with his buddy. She got drunk, got mad at him, and the next thing you know, there it is. There you got it. And we seeing that a lot in our culture. That's just wide base. Oh, what, that wasn't that wasn't black folk. I will <laughs> say that it wasn't black folk. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, I think in our culture, I think that we have such economic stressors and educational stressors, and women are beginning to achieve at levels yes, we that, are. that the brothers have not caught up with. And that causes tremendous stress, and it's difficult to maintain a relationship when our, our own internal structure is becoming so separated. And it's, it's, a, it's a problem that really needs to be addressed. You know, that is so true because some men have trouble dealing with a, a powerful woman. Are you saying that? And if you are, how do you tell a, a woman to, to handle that? You know, it's interesting, one of the difficulties in our marriage was when I got married to my husband, I was, an, I was an attorney and he was an accountant. We were pretty much on level ground professionally. Then I became a judge and then I became, I was on television and he remained an accountant. So we did have that pressure of me continuing to ascend and he was where he was and I think that hurt him a little bit. And I tried to make up for it by being, making myself smaller and smaller in the home. That was not working. That <laughs> it wasn't the way to go. I think what we have to do as people, when you have that kind of differentiation between husband and wife, you sit down and talk about what it is and what it means. It means that he's often going to have to go into circumstances that are uncomfortable for him because you have your business functions. You have to bring your man with him. And he needs to know that you appreciate him, that you understand him, that you're not embarrassed by him, and also assist him in bringing up, leveling up his game, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and don't be offended by the fact that she's trying to help you level up your game. Do so with love and kindness, not with anger, and uh, it, it will help. It will help bring you together as you transcend and, and go on your journey. Do you think some men can receive that wisdom that you just put out from the wife, or will they receive it better from their friend or, as we say, homeboy? I think community has a lot to do with it. And I really do think that the more black men support black men in their ability to, to, to become more educated and, and progress, I think that's very, very important. It, and I think it's also, I, you know, women always think of ourselves as great communicators, but we don't speak, speak male very well. Mm. Uh, we, we, we can speak nag, we can speak voluminously, but we don't speak in a manner that will 
touch a man's heart in the right way. So when you're telling your man something negative, you've got to do it in a certain way. You can't crook your neck. You can't have the finger. <laughs> you've got to. You've got to be able to speak to him in a way that will not hurt that very real ego. And so that's something that you have to learn. But also the community has to support him in whatever he does in trying to become a better and more stable husband. Do you think sometimes we just need to find out what they like? I think my mother never gave my daddy what he liked. She gave him what he needed. Okay. And those are two different things. Okay. They Elabor elaborate on that. Well, let's see. Uh, let, me, let me tell you something without getting myself in trouble. Um, my husband used to like me to say, yes, okay, whatever you want all the time, but that's not what he needed. What he needed was a woman who'd say, yeah, I understand what you want to do, but today I'd like to do this. Because when I kept saying yes all of the time, he got used to having his way all of the time. And then I taught him that whenever I wanted my way, it, was, it wasn't right. But now that I express my needs freely, he's happier with me because I'm happier. Yes. And we're happier together. So he needed a stronger wife than I was. So I had to step up my game to bring the strength and comfort that he needed so he could be happy too. Well, we've got to go to commercial break, but I want them to know how can they, I would say, email you, go to your website, and also how can they pick up your books? Maybe somebody wants all three. Okay. Well, I, I, I'm always on Facebook at Judge Lynn Toller of Divorce Court. I tweet at, at, at Real Judge Lynn, and I also have a website, JudgeLynn.com, and I'm in all of those places every day. Well, Judge Lynn, I want to say thank you so much for coming to our city, Columbus, Georgia. We're going to commercial break, then we're coming back with Lyndon Birch. Unity with Pam is being brought to you by these great sponsors. When you've been hurt in an accident, it helps to have experienced and knowledgeable attorneys to help you in your time of need. For over 30 years, our office has been helping victims in auto and truck accidents or with work-related injuries. We resolved thousands of cases, both in and out of court. So if you've been hurt and it wasn't your fault, talk to Walt. Talk to Walt. Talk to Walt. Talk to Walt. For your free consultation, call today, 1-855-GO-ASK-WALT. For more than 60 years, the Dairy Queen recipe for success has been simple. It's been a combination of hardworking people, great tasting food, and tempting treats served in our establishments every day. Although a lot has changed in 60 years, some things remain the same. The smiles on children's faces, a treat for a good report card, close friends enjoying a great meal, and families spending quality time together. Here at DQ, we are always committed to treat you right. Local Church Connection is an exciting new publication in the Columbus area. Local Church Connection is a magazine that offers free advertising to Christian churches. Our circulation is 10,000, and we're free to pick up at over 100 locations in Columbus, Harris County, and Phoenix City. Be on the lookout for our new March-April edition of Local Church Connection. For business or church advertising, contact Tricia Jeems at 706-244-6413. And check out our website at localchurchconnection.com. Welcome you to be a part of our ministry. This is not a put on, but this is a come on. And we come to share in our different ministries with our dance team, with our choir, and our TV ministry. And we're looking for great things to happen, great miracles to happen within this great thing to happen, great miracles to happen within this place. Come and be a part of the blessing plan. Hello and welcome back to Unity. I'm telling you, we've been talking about the Black Marriage Day, and this is the man who is very vocal, instrumental in bringing it to Columbus, Georgia. He is Mr. Lyndon Birch. I want to go ahead and say welcome to Unity. Thank you for having me. Well, tell my viewers, we're talking about the Black Marriage Day. What made you want to do something like this? What, how did you see the need of it, first of all? Well, uh, my day-to-day -day work, I work with young ladies in the after-school program at Girls Incorporated, and you know, I noticed a lot of single parents. And then I heard a, a statistic that today, three out of four um, 
out of wed we had three out of four out of wedlock birth rate. So I said, I told my wife, I said, that's just, you know, just too much. And it was on tele on uh, the radio, and I ran across something on the internet about Black Marriage Day, strengthening black marriages. And this was in 2010, actually. And um, they had just celebrated at that point. And I called the young lady, Miss Nisa Muhammad, and spoke with her, and uh, asked her, had anyone decided to do it here in Columbus? And she said, no. She said, be my guest. And from there, I took, you know, I started compiling lists and trying to meet with different people, trying to meet with some of the pastors, and um, got our first event in 2011. We also instruct, uh, inducted a Hall of Fame couple, uh, seven, seven Hall of Fame couples, and um, Reverend Ralph Hewling was our first speaker. Oh, wow. You know, I'm hearing you talk about, you know, young ladies and, and you know, having children out of wet, like I'm trying to be as soft on that as I can. Yes. But the truth is just the truth. You know, what can we say as we heard from Judge Lynn Toller? She touched a little bit about the breakdowns in the homes a little bit. And what can, what can we do? Linda, what can we do? We most definitely have to work with our daughters and our sons, but mainly our daughters and build their self-esteem. You know, they have so, we have so many young ladies out there that think so little of themselves. You know, that first little slick guy come by, you know, with a good little word game, they fall for him. Mm -hmm. And that's just not right. You know, we got to build our women, our girls' self-esteem and let them know that they're worthy. And we also have to tell our young men that the true measure of a man is a man that can commit himself to one woman. And uh, I think if we, that's the beginning. You know, that's not the, the, the ultimate or the end all. But that is a beginning, and we have to mentor these kids and mentor and be in their lives and put God first. Well, you're a relatively young man, I may say. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm 39, so I'm still going to hold it. I don't care if I'm 80, I'm going to be young. <laughs> but I'm like, you're a young man, very positive man. If somebody on that camera is looking at you saying, wow, I like what this brother is doing, why would I want to mentor myself behind you? Well, I, I try to, <clears throat> excuse me, I try to live my life like I want to be treated. And I want, I have three children, and I want, uh, want my daughter to see a positive man, the way I treat her mother, the way I love her mother. I want my daughter to find someone like myself. So I have to be that example. I feel that I have to be that example for her and for my son. You know, he's, he's um, at that age now where, my older son, he's at that age where, you know, the girls are just calling and they're all <laughs> over him and they are really um, got, has his attention. So I have to live that life that is a positive example for them. And, you know, one thing I would like to ask you, you know, being a man too, do you feel that God plays a lot in your home? Oh, yes. Yes. He, he plays a, a big role in my home. We have... Um, uh, like I said, we have three children, and we have to show them, you know, that, that positive example. Um, and I know schools no longer have I, God in the schools I know. And, and, and prayer, but we have to, as adults and as citizens, we have to make sure that our children understand and, and respect God and understand and have a positive role, of, a God role in their life. You know, I, I've got to piggyback off of something you said. You talked about your son, and he's, in, he's at that age where girls are finding him eye candy, as the kids say now, the word is <laughs> eye candy, and they're calling him and everything. How do you keep him being level and not letting that swell his head? I talk to him. <laughs> okay. I stay in his ear every chance I get. When we're on the road to school, I'm talking to him. When I pick him up, I'm talking to him, finding out how his day went. Um, he, he's very receptive right now, but he told me, he said, it's hard. And I know it's hard. You know, I was a young man one time. But I, I explained to him that, you know, if he goes out there and gets his education and gets his self together, then he'll have all the women in the world he wants. But I want him to choose one. You know, he'll be able to find one. But that's down the road. He don't have to worry about that now. That's not something he needs to be focused on. Well, I've got two minutes. I want you to touch on Black Marriage Day. And after you have this event, that Judge Lynn Toller is here. What's next for Linda with the Black Marriage Day? I'm glad you asked. Uh, as we promoted this event this year, 
everyone or a lot of people that I've spoken with, they want to know what's going to be the next event. Absolutely. We want to have um, either quarterly events or even monthly events where couples, families can come out and fellowship where there's no alcohol, there's just fun for the family. We have um, some bowling night scheduled. We have some Friday nights in the park. Um, and Friday night fish fries. You coming. said some jazz too on that phone. Play and jazz, with and some jazz, jazz in the park. You're right. Jazz in the park. And uh, so I want everybody to go to my website at blackmarriagedaytricities.org and sign the newsletter so we can get your email and put you on our list. Now, is it open up to all couples? Does it strictly have to be African American? No, it doesn't have to be African American couples. We want to increase the marriage or positive marriages in, throughout the community. If we have positive communities, and if we have positive marriage in the community, the community is, is a better community. Well, Linda, I want to say thank you so much for doing Big Girl Show and always show love in the community. Local Church Connection is an exciting new publication in the Columbus area. Local Church Connection is a magazine that offers free advertising to Christian churches. Our circulation is 10,000, and we're free to pick up at over 100 locations in Columbus, Harris County, and Phoenix City. Be on the lookout for our new March-April edition of Local Church Connection. For business or church advertising, contact Tricia Jeems at 706-244-6413. And check out our website at localchurchconnection.com. welcome you to be a part of our ministry. This is not a put-on, but this is a come-on. And we come to share in our different ministries with our dance team, with our choir, and our TV ministry. And we're looking for great things to happen, great miracles to happen within this great thing to happen, great miracles to happen within this place. Come and be a part of the blessing plan. When you've been hurt in an accident, it helps to have experienced and knowledgeable attorneys to help you in your time of need. For over 30 years, our office has been helping victims in auto and truck accidents or with work-related injuries. We resolve thousands of cases, both in and out of court. So if you've been hurt and it wasn't your fault, talk to Walt. Talk to Walt. Talk to Walt. Talk to Walt. For your free consultation, call today, 1-855-GO-ASK-WALT. For more than 60 years, the Dairy Queen recipe for success has been simple. It's been a combination of hardworking people, great tasting food, and tempting treats served in our establishments every day. Although a lot has changed in 60 years, some things remain the same. The smiles on children's faces, a treat for a good report card, close friends enjoying a great meal, and families spending quality time together. Here at DQ, we are always committed to treat you right. Thank you for watching Unity with Pam. If you would like to be a sponsor, please contact us or visit unitywithpam.org. Production for Unity with Pam is provided by At Motion Media Incorporated.